Hey, how you doing? West Coast Johnny. Happy Thanksgiving. Today's Thursday. It's Thanksgiving. And uh, before all the festivities start, I got to work on these oars. So yesterday we clamped them all up and they've been sitting in the sun since early this morning. And I'm going to go ahead and start cutting them. Here's what they look like. Okay, here they are. They're all clamped up and... They're uh, 92 and a quarter inches long because we used a stud. And we're gonna go ahead and unclamp them. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna start working on this. See, there's gonna be an angle. We're gonna cut these at a slight angle, okay? Because we want what's called camber on our oar. And what camber is, it's, it's what keeps it kind of like curved on both sides so that as you're rowing through the water, there's less resistance. And in things like uh, rowing teams, they want more resist. You know, they want the flat oars that give lots of resistance. But when we're just out in our boat paddling ashore, um, we don't want to hurt our backs and stuff. We want oars that will glide through, but yet still carry us <clears throat> rather than just digging perfectly flat against um, all the, the water tension, making it kind of hard to actually row. Here's our uh, original set of oar locks. These came with the boat. See that? They fit right in the pin and uh, they're just kind of old and rusty. But you know what? I'm going to go ahead and sandblast these and get some some stainless hardware and paint those real nice. And maybe what we'll do is we'll make our or our oars work with those as well as the, the uh, second set we made. Okay, so I went ahead and I set up my oar, and I'm going to go ahead and cut 12 degrees off of that. So we got this all set up to cut. And then we're just going to keep rotating it. All right, so what I'm going to use to sand these down further is none other than my Porter Cable Locomotive. Doesn't that look like a train? Like, remember the beginning of Soul Train? Well, anyways, this is an old Porter Cable from the 1960s, belonged to my dad. This thing is pure beast mode. When you pull this trigger, it just takes off. It, it really, you gotta hold on to it with both hands. So uh, it's really cool in its own weight. will hog all that material off. You don't even have to push really cool. So we're going to go ahead and start. All right. Well, so we went ahead and we cut these off with our saw, our hand saw, and now we're taking a little shape. So we're going to go ahead and continue the sanding. We're just going to keep sanding uh, at a 12 degree angle, back and forth, back and forth. And I'm using the locomotive sander, the, uh, so that, you know, won't take me all day, but I'm not sure what I would recommend anyone else using unless they can find just a good, good heavy sander and you want at least, I would say an 80 grit to do this. So I'm, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna put some 80 grit on my sander. Hey, good morning. It's in the shop with West Coast Johnny. It's the day after Thanksgiving. It's Friday morning, it's early. And I'm up because I'm going to finish these oars today. But I uh, realized after I was sanding with that uh, uh, Porter Cable sander last night, the one that looks like a locomotive, that I have a lot of material to take off. And that sander is just going to take too long because, well, for one, the sandpaper I was using was 80 grit and it was getting dull and I, I can't find the rest of it. So I got a 36 grit. Look how gnarly that is. Um, this is great, you know, on fiberglass and things, but when you use this on wood, it, it virtually doesn't wear out. Like I've used this many times on wood projects. It looks like it's brand new. So 
We're going to use this. We're going to adhere. It's a sticky back. We're going to adhere this to a six inch orbital sander. It's a quarter cable sander, variable speed. And we're just going to take a bunch of material off. Okay. And then after we do that, we're going to move it to the, to the other, the front of the shop. And we're going to get the draw knife, the hand knife, and we're going to hand hewn our oars. And uh, let me tell you, you're not a man until you hand hewn your own pair of oars. <laughs> so here we have some tools that I'm going to use. Uh, this one is called a hand knife. Now this one's really cool. Look at that. You can adjust the handles if you want them out or in. It's really cool. Then there's the one you just grab with both hands and you just pull back and it's called hewning. And that's how you hand hewn logs and things like that. But today we're going to hand hewn some oars. Uh, I really like how you can uh, move these ones. Now these are really cool too. This is called a spoke shave or a spoke shaver. And you go ahead and you, you know, you grab it with both hands. Sorry, I got the camera, but here's what you do. You grab it and you just like this, a little at a time. Now this, these are great. Now this one's flat and this one's curved. I was using this one. I used this one before. What's nice about so what I'm going to do, I'm going to hand hewn the oars probably with this one. And when they look like they're just about done with the big stuff, I'm going to go ahead and jump onto the curved one. And I'm just going to take a little more off and I'll show you. Then the last step, we'll, we're going to go over it with some sandpaper. So let's get to work. Okay, it's coming. I still got some more to do. You can see where it used to be square. And uh, I'm only making it so big around. I just wanted a lot, you know, like hand size. So one, uh, pro one problem doing this, you really have to have a good free workbench uh, because when you're hand knifing this stuff back, this whole thing wants to move. And unfortunately my workbench is full of fiberglass tools because I'm right in the middle of the scamp project. So here we're doing this. I'm almost done with the hand knife. Then I'm gonna bust out the spoke shaver, which is kind of like a little plane, but you use it with both hands. And I'm gonna smooth this down really nice. And then I'm gonna sand it. And then we're probably gonna put some spar varnish on it. Well, there they are. They look beautiful. I love them. They turned out nice. Um, see, that's just kind of, it's round. They're not perfectly straight, you know, like they came off a lathe. But that's, like I said, that's fine with me. Um, it's hard to hewn. When I say hewn, I mean, you know, use the hand knife. It's hard to use the hand knife around knots. So wherever there's a knot, like here, 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 you know, there was a few. Here was a big one. There was one here. Um, what happens when you're when you're using the um, hand knife and it hits like right here, it wants to, it won't just go through. It won't slice the knot off. So you just got to kind of do what you can, avoid it, and then come back and sand it with the sandpaper. So there they are. I think they look great. I'm going to go ahead and throw some amber shellac on them right now. Make sure you always stir the shellac up really well. It's kind of like stain. You gotta, you gotta mix it up really good. But don't, don't, you don't wanna shake it because you don't wanna create any kind of air bubbles. Just stir it up. There we go.
All right, I got a coat of the amber shellac on. I love the color. So that's just one coat. We're gonna let it dry. You know, it's gonna be getting dark in about an hour and a half, and I want this to dry overnight. So tomorrow morning, we're gonna, we're gonna come out to the shop and we're gonna sand these with 220, put a second coat, wait a few hours, sand that with 220, third coat, sand with 220, and then the fourth and final coat will be really, really smooth. It's gonna look nice. Hey, how you doing? So this morning, the first thing I did, I sanded the oars down with 220s grit sandpaper. Not too much down, just a little bit. You're supposed to just go a little bit. Dusted them all off, now I'm putting the second coat of amber shellac on. And one little tip, in case, sometimes when you're going like this and you're brushing it, it could run and make little drips on the other side. So be get a little rag, and you know, you might want to wipe, see I just got one right there. So, but look how warm and rich that looks. Hey, here we are, Friday night, San Diego. It's a nice, beautiful, warm night. The oars are finished. We got all of our amber shellac, spar varnish. We sanded 220 grit in between. The only thing left to do to make these old oars look like the old Indian head oars, which is the whole reason I made these in the first place, is to put something like this on. Look at that. My buddies Nick and Brian down at San Diego Sticker made me these die cut transfers in dark red and uh, it's an homage to the Indian head company that made oars way back in the old days and as a matter of fact the whole reason I made these oars and made them look the way I did you know just that old hand hewn look was because I really wanted some oars that just look like old uh, oars well anyways so we're gonna put these on tomorrow we go out to San Vicente Reservoir, which is the biggest reservoir, I believe, in San Diego County. And we're going to reveal the motor. I'm not gonna tell you, I got a new, I got a new motor, and it's not new. Um, I did have a really nice 25 horsepower Mercury motor, and I'm gonna use that when I'm like cruising around the bay, because San Diego has a lot of bays, and when I'm like racing around in this boat, I'll use that motor. But when I'm out lake fishing uh, for all kinds of fish, because I'm a huge fisherman, out on the lake, I'm gonna use this motor. And wait till you see this motor. When I saw this motor, I said, I have to have the, that motor for this boat. So tomorrow, we're gonna try it out for the first time. Right now, I'm mixing up all the fuel and the, the gas. It's like a 24 to one. It's oh, actually, it's, it's a six gallon vintage can gas can it's, it's called the johnson mile a day and uh we're just mixing up the fuel we got we're just chaining up our motor we're just doing some little last minute things for the boat we're getting our air horn our life jackets our, our registration our flotation devices we we're all ready to go so uh let's throw this decals on real quick Well, they're on and they look good. And I'm gonna say the ore project, we're gonna call this a wrap. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, leave comments. Oh, you can't see that. Well, it's covered up, but see that? Tomorrow, it's gonna be the big reveal. I, I even have it chained because I do not wanna lose this motor off the back of the boat. And, uh, it's going to be a big surprise reveal motor. But thank you for tuning in for this. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Uh, love all my uh, people. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment. Take care.